Today we're going to talk about electrical stimulation, primarily TENS, EMS or NMES, and FES. What all these terms mean, how you should be using these different types of electrical stimulation, and whether or not you even should be using these types of electrical stimulation to help you restore your movement and improve your function. Now full disclosure, this video is sponsored by CareX. They sent me their unit a couple of weeks ago that offers TENS and EMS. So at the end of this video, I am going to go into their product in a little bit more detail and kind of what my experience has been in using their product over the last couple of weeks. But the primary purpose of this video is to clear up any confusion on what TENS is, what NMES is or what it means, what FES is, and how you can use them to enhance your neural recovery. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to reach your highest maximum level. But before we get into what eSTEM is and how it actually works and whether or not it's right for you, first it's important, very big picture and very simplified to understand what normal movement is and what kind of is going on behind the scenes, why you can't move after a stroke or a brain injury, and then once you understand that, what exactly is eSTEM doing and is it a good tool to restore movement? So first, very big picture in a healthy brain, voluntary movement, and this is extremely simplified. There is a little electrical signal that starts on the cortex of your brain, goes through your brainstem to your spinal cord and to a motor unit, which is where a nerve and a muscle meet. When that electrical impulse gets to that motor unit, that is what causes a muscle to shorten. And shortening of that muscle is what causes a bone to move. Now, again, that is extremely simplified. Now, the other thing that causes a muscle to contract is the reflex arc that is primarily just at the spinal level around that muscle. And what the reflex arc is, is there are little sensors inside the muscle. The reflex arc, um, if it senses that a muscle is being lengthened to quickly in a healthy brain, the normal response is that it will send a signal to the muscle to get the muscle to contract, to protect that muscle. And in fact, there are techniques that we use to actually kind of tap into this reflex arc in the very early stages of rehab to get a muscle to contract when you're trying to relearn a movement. So we use quick stretches. So we actually rapidly lengthen the muscle to try and get this reflex arc to kind of kick in. And it does work in the early stages. Now, when I've talked about it, when it comes to spasticity, um, it, it becomes negative when there's it's allowed to just kind of spin out of control. So after a brain injury, uh, you lose the ability to suppress that. So even though the reflex arc is meant as a protective mechanism, it'll sense when a muscle is being lengthened too quickly and almost immediately cause it to contract. Well, the brain steps in and assesses further, is the muscle really being damaged? And if not, it'll kind of override that reflex arc and kind of send an inhibitory signal to kind of stop that muscle contraction. So spasticity, total side note, total tangent, but for those of you who haven't seen my multitude of videos on spasticity, so in spasticity what happens, you lose that uh, overriding system of the brain to step in and stop that muscle from contracting. That's what causes the muscle to contract involuntarily. But back to the topic of this video, those are kind of the two main mechanisms that are involved in getting a muscle to contract. You've got that cortex signal coming down and then you have that reflex arc. Now, after a stroke, what happens is, is that you have damage somewhere in your brain. So either you have damage to the nerves in the cortex that control that movement or somewhere deeper in the brain that the, that electrical impulse has to go through in order to get to the spinal cord, to get to the motor unit. And that's why you can't move it after a stroke or a brain injury. And that's big picture. There are other components to motor control that are beyond the scope of this video. So that's what you need to understand so that now we can get into what exactly does eSTEM do and what is electrical stimulation. Well, electrical stimulation, big picture, are electrodes that are put on the skin's surface and are attached to a machine that deliver an electrical impulse directly to the 
muscle. So first, let's talk about TENS. So what TENS is, is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. That's what it stands for. So transcutaneous means traveling through intact skin. And then the ENS is electrical nerve stimulation. So that TENS, that electrical stimulation delivered through those pads, is a low frequency stimulation that stimulates a sensory nerve that kind of overrides the pain sensation. So that's the big picture simplified concept of how TENS works. So moral of the story, TENS, T-E-N-S, because for those of you that already have a machine, that is primarily a modality that is used for pain. And it works pretty well. So I would say if you are using it for pain, the only thing that I would add to that is that I would not leave it on for more than 20 to 30 minutes at a time. I have seen just, this is just in my experience, that you do become desensitized to it a little bit over time. So I'd say if you are using TENS for pain, not to leave it on for more than 20 to 30 minutes at one time. And again, I don't think it's a modality that can be used in isolation. I think it's a good modality to use in conjunction with other kind of conservative pain management strategies, possibly range of motion, standing, weight bearing, things like that. So used in conjunction with other modalities, I think it is a great modality for pain. Now let's talk about EMS or NMES, neuromuscular electrical stimulation. This is a higher frequency waveform still delivered through pads that are at the local level or at the level of the muscle. And this works in two ways. So NMES works by sending a signal signal to the brain and then also sending an electrical impulse at the local level. They believe that it stimulates type 2 muscle fibers, which very importantly is not the primary muscle fiber that uh, is used for functional movement. So very important when I get to how you should be using NMES, which the majority of people are not using correctly. So then NMES, in addition to stimulating those type 2 muscle fibers also stimulates 1A sensory nerve fibers. So what are 1A sensory nerve fibers? 1A sensory nerve fibers are the nerve fibers associated with that reflex arc. Very, very important to know. So remember I talked about there are two kind of ways that we get a muscle to contract. One is coming from the cortex and going to that muscle. The other way is just kind of at that local level. So very important to know that NMES stimulates that 1A muscle fiber. So moral of the story with NMES is it primarily is creating a muscle contraction at the local level, at the level of the muscle. Remember I said after a stroke or the brain injury, the main reason why you can't move that arm or that leg is because you have damage to those higher centers. So NMES in isolation, I do not believe has any utility. It does not have any value or usefulness in isolation after a stroke or a brain injury if you want a therapeutic effect. And what a therapeutic effect is, is when you take that e-stem off, you get that, you, that muscle you, works. You actually get movement after the e-stem is removed. That's a therapeutic effect. And I don't think EMS or NMES in isolation works because without any other modality going on concurrently, you are just getting that involuntary contraction at that local level and you are not addressing the main issue of why you can't move, which is because your brain cannot send that electrical impulse down to that area. But the way that NMES is very effective is if it is used in conjunction with a functional activity. 
or used in conjunction with mirror therapy. There is utility to use NMES in conjunction with other therapeutic modalities to anything that'll get that cortex, get those higher levels involved. So task-oriented, goal-directed activities have been found to be extremely effective in conjunction with neuromuscular electrical stimulation. And in fact, when a goal-directed, task-oriented activity is used in conjunction with neuromuscular electrical stimulation, they do see more activity in that higher level area or that cortex. So in conjunction, there is evidence that supports that it is effective and you can get a therapeutic effect. Now, the reason I'm stressing this so many times is I've worked in a lot of different facilities. I've seen a lot of different um, therapists and unfortunately no facility that I'm currently associated with, but facilities I've been associated with in the past where you walk by and you just see people sitting there at a table just hooked up to ESTEM while the therapist and the patient are either having a conversation or the therapist is documenting. And I, I don't think there's any value in that. So if that's how how you're using e-stem in therapy or that's how you're using e-stem at home. I actually think it can be counterproductive down the road because again, you do become desensitized to it. So I think that if that is the way that you're using it, I would um, try and add some kind of a goal-directed task-oriented activity in conjunction with it. Now, the last one I'm going to talk about is FES. So that's a functional electrical stimulation. It's not something that the unit that I'm going to talk about in a minute here goes has on it, but it is important because you guys hear this term a lot, but functional electrical stimulation is when um, electrical stimulation is used in conjunction with a functional uh, activity. So WalkAid and Bioness are the two main companies that make very good uh, functional electrical stimulation units. One is just a cuff that goes on your leg and it times with your walking and stimulates the muscle that lifts the foot at the exact moment that it needs to lift when you are walking and then it shuts off when your foot needs to come down. So that's one example of FES. Bioness makes one for the arm where you wear like kind of like a sleeve that goes on your forearm and it's got electrodes. And again, that can be used with grasp and release type activities. That's another form of FES. The FES that I use in my clinic is just with a trigger switch. So I do have a unit that has a trigger switch on it and basically I just walk alongside someone and I time it with the movements um, in the example that I'm using now. Usually when they're walking I will have it hooked up to the muscles that lift the foot and we just time it while you're walking. That's another form of FES. So I hope that helps you to understand kind of what e electrical stimulation is and the most effective way to incorporate it into your therapy. Now this electrical simulation machine that Carex uh, sent me recently. I'm really loving it. I've used it on several patients, probably four or five patients more than once. Um, it's very easy to use. It has both TENS and EMS on it. It has four channels, so you can hook it up to two muscles simultaneously if you wanted. And the feature that I like the most on it is it has like an on-off cycle. So that's the one that I use most frequently if I am going to be doing any type of a functional task or using it in conjunction with mirror therapy. I like that on-off cycle, and this machine does have that. The buttons are big and they're easy to identify, so can easily be used by someone that has hemiplegia with no problems at all. And it is probably the most reasonably priced machine um, that I know of that does all of these functions. So again, I've been using eSTEM for a really long time. I really believe in it. If you follow some of the suggestions that I gave in this video, this machine in particular, I've been using for a couple of weeks and I'm really, really fond of. It's affordable. I will put a link in the description below for this unit. If you use the link in the description below, you do get a 15% discount. Now, in addition, I am gonna be doing a part two to this video to show you how to set it up 
to get arm and wrist movement and also how to get foot and ankle movement. So definitely stay tuned for that video. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.